Coming up, the Jags and Colts face off for the first time this season. They split the series each of the last three years, with Jacksonville's lone win in 2020 coming against Indy. It's Week 10, and it's next on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here at Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Alongside Charles Davis, uh, CD, you look at the Jaguars in this matchup, you figure they've got to be looking forward to this one. They've got a clear advantage on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and they totally understand it, not just by running the numbers, but those numbers do play into it because you've got one of the better passing offenses in the league, a top 10 unit, going up against one of the poor defenses in the league. So I think we're going to see these guys take some shots downfield. But right from the start, I expect them to attack and get right after them. This will be a touchback. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their third-year quarterback, former sixth overall selection from Duke. It's Daniel Jones. And this is a game for grit, determination, and somehow finding a way not to panic. What a horrible start for them. I mean, they haven't won a game yet. So now, as a quarterback, you're not just talking to your team. You've got to demonstrate to them what they need to do to win. He's got to be the leader by how he plays. And that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. Trying to get the ball to his tight end in the center of the field where he runs a lot of his routes and ostensibly is extremely comfortable. He was hoping he'd find a seam and a big gainer to go along with it, but that one was incomplete. Now a throw out to his fullback is complete. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. They just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. They'll run. This is Daryl Henderson, and he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They're able to convert with a gain of four. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Jones. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. To throw again on second down, Jones. That'll be swung out wide here for Henderson. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Throwing Jones. He'll air this one out deep for Davis. And all oh, that, nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. Now it's Lockett. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led by their fourth-year quarterback out of Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. His game last week reminded me of the old song, Accentuate the Positive. That's about, that's about all he did, right? Yeah. Three touchdown passes, over 300 yards in the air. Receivers happy. If and they got the win. Got the win. If you're running back that likes to catch passes, they're happy as well. Big time game. A gain of six there on first. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Mayfield looks to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. 
Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Mayfield now. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. To throw on second and ten. Mayfield. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? First a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play to just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to give that big advantage early. Now Joe Mixon. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Mayfield. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 20-yard line. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. From the red zone now, Mayfield. Letting one go deep for the end zone. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. He was looking for his tight end, Mark Andrews, there. But it's going to be second down. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. Heavy set out there on third and one. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Mixon. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. To throw Mayfield. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Jamison Crowder, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jags have taken the early lead. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Lutz good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll run with Henderson here to begin the drive. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. On second down, back to Henderson. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Henderson will try to run for the first. And yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Returnable for Lockett. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Four and four, their record through eight games on the season. Would you say that this team has overperformed, underperformed, or are they kind of right where you thought that they would be? Do you mind if I say yes, yes, and yes? <laughs> because ultimately to me, four and four is about where they should be because we've seen weeks where they've been really, really good. They've looked terrific. Other weeks where we wondered just how good is this team? They want to be consistent in their play, not consistently inconsistent, which is what they've been thus far. A gain of 28 yards there and give them the first down. Mayfield to throw it. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. And the numbers for Andrews last week, five catches, 101 yards, and a score. And I get the feeling that he loves this matchup. I mean, the unit he's going against is in the bottom half of the league against the pass. He had to have circled this one on the schedule and said to himself, this should be a big game. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. And again, it's Mayfield. Looking for Andrews again. He's got him this time. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A well-executed 22-yard game. Mixon is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. This Colts D up to the challenge so far, but they need another stop here on third and goal. Here's Mayfield. Touchdown, Jaguars! Russell Gage, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars have taken a 13 to nothing first quarter lead. It's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You got to make sure to just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. Lutz with the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback. They'll that begin at the 25. Indy set to go on offense once more. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Throwing to start the drive. Jones, and he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Fourteen nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll go back to Henderson on first down. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Jones to throw on third down. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. 
This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. As the offense comes out, we put our Madden spotlight on Baker Mayfield. He's showing off that arm, showing it off very well. They've got the lead. Don't forget, though, about the protection he's had. The protection's been good. And I'll guarantee you, he hasn't forgotten about it at all because that's keeping him clean in the pocket, allowing him to step into throws and make those deep passes come true. I mean, it's just been beautiful for him to do. But guess what? In the huddle, on the sidelines, guaranteed he's thanking those big guys up front for keeping him safe. I have a feeling he made by dinner. <laughs> Indeed, entertaining to relive some of those deep balls. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Mayfield on first down. This complete to lock it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Edmonds running out of the shotgun. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. The Jaguars on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Now Mayfield. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Andrews. Seven yards on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Teron Armstead, Pro Bowl tackle, called for the penalty there. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Now a give to Edmonds. Oh, Edmonds has it knocked loose. And the Colts pick it up. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stripe. Oh, that's me. That's me. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, Jones. Seven yards to pick up there. Certainly worth noting, he's now one catch away from 600. He's at 599 in his career. Working with a second and three. From the gun, a give to Henderson. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. 45 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. So first and 10 now from the 30. Back to throw. Jones. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Preston Smith in there to get him. Sack number 14 for him on the year. Running left is Henderson. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. A good positive play there, nine yards, but still third and long. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. The Colts on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. Looking to throw. Jones. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And that's off the left upright, but it carries right in. How about that? The kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. 
So put three on the board. A little bit of a hook on the driver that time. Looked a little bit like you, Charles, over on the eighth at Windermere. <laughs> you know me too well, partner. Except that he got his to hit a tree and kick back into the fairway. Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Throwing Mayfield. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Oh, pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. Colquitt on the kick as he sends it away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signal for and taken. It's just a 32-yard punt with no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times, but as you pointed out, Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? The Colts on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and ten. From the gun, Jones. Uncorks one for Davis. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they are back to 500 on the year. Got the win last weekend. And it's one that kept their playoff hopes alive. And if you do have those hopes, 500 is not where you want to be at this point of the year. Now, we know they battled through some rough patches this season. So it now comes down to how they're going to finish. Not out of it. Can't afford any more missteps, though. From the 35 on second down, Mayfield. And this is a quick slant to lock it. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. He's exceeded his receiving yards from a week ago, and we're still in the first half. It's a first down. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time, and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming. Pick them up. Pick them up. And someone jumped. Mayfield's throw taken in there by Crowder. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A good pick up there, a 22. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. 
They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Going to the air again with Mayfield. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The Jaguars on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and seven. That's out to the flat for Edmonds. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. A first down throw for Mayfield. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Second and 10 now from the 27. They'll set up a throw. Nowhere to turn here, he's gonna go down. Back at about the 37 yard line. Well, that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks, but to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. And he'll spot Higgins open left side. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And Lutz's kick is good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17 to 3. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. Green to bring it back. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Robbie Anderson making his way back onto the field. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter, and they're losing. You got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree, so you have to give them credit, but that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Now Jones throwing on first down. There goes a deep ball in zone. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw again. This one complete to Scott Miller. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Hassan Reddick able to record his fifth sack of the season. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it online, but it comes up about a rotation short. 
All things considered, a pretty good kick. Just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck. And unfortunately for him, this time the break goes against him. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. One second, all that remains. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. So that would have been something from that distance, but to no avail. Comes up empty as we have reached the intermission. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in a minute. But first, let's take a spin around the NFL and see what's going on here in week number 10. Let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. We continue on with the check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Jags. And they've definitely been able to exploit some holes in that opposing secondary as they threw for close to 200 yards in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Colts, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. No run back here to begin the half, here we go. and we will here we go. start at the 25-yard line. So here are the Jaguars to take over on offense. They were winners a week ago against Buffalo, and they lead here with a first and ten. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And Andrews lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And they are going to score for the fumble return. Touchdown, Indianapolis. This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. You know that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. Naimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And it's up through the goal post. It's 17-10. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Jaguars offense ready to set up shop here again. They'll be looking to make amends for the events of a moment ago. A fumble return for six points. You absolutely have to protect the football. That's got to be priority number one because margin for error is starting to slip away. Now it's down to a one-score game. First down, Mayfield. It's caught. Lock it. Oh, he's got some breathing room. The third. Jaguars. Tyler Lockett, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jaguars are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, we know that he can beat you in a number of ways. He can catch it short, he can take it long, or he can do what we just saw right there, catch it and then run with the football. Yeah, and that was sheer determination right there. He decided before the play, if there was a sliver, he was going to take advantage of it. Looked the ball in, turned on the Jets, and took it all the way. Lutz good on the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Green to bring it back. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. 
Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. And they run the option on second down. And this will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Throwing Jones. And that is incomplete. But the passing windows are just not there, and that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Tyler Lockett trotting onto the field, getting set for this next drive. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation, the catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. 58 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. On first and 10, Mayfield. Here's Higgins out of the right side. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. And Mayfield just getting the playoff. Throw right side, pulled in by Higgins. Seven yards, the pick up there. On second down now, Mixon. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. Quick slant to Crowder. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first Let's down go, at the Colts 17-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Out to the right, he gets it to lock it. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Two yards left on second down from the nine. From the gun, Mayfield. The quick slant caught. Touchdown! Mark Andrews with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Lutz with the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Green to bring it back. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. 
These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Again, it's Henderson. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and 10. Now Jones. He'll get this complete to Jalen Rager. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Henderson now on first and 10. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They run once more with Henderson. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. You got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw. Jones. He'll air this one out deep for Davis. Touchdown, Colts! Corey Davis, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Colts are able to cut into this lead. Quite a show of arm strength right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You're trying to get off the field, and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary, and you give up a big one. And the final number on that throw, boy, it traveled an even 69 yards. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead will be cut down to 14. That time, a six-play drive. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Shoves him aside. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They'll run on first down, Edmonds. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Neville Hewitt credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He lets it fly for Lockett. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tyler Lockett, his second touchdown of the Afternoon. And the Jaguars get another third-quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. 
in order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Lutz good on the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. So the drive there took six plays. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Green to bring it back. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Money in the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. Call that a loss of a yard and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage should be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw. Jones. And oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. The Colts send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. So a change of possession here on the punt. Now it appears we're going to get whistles and a stop. A man down on the return. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Mayfield to throw it. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Third quarter here in Indy. This is second and ten. To throw Mayfield. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. And that has him staring at a third and ten. Mayfield. They'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Second down, it's Henderson, and not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. The Colts on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and seven. Back to throw. Jones. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Here's Jones on first down. Right back to Davis. It's complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. 
the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he'll find Henderson there. It's complete. And despite the good footwork, he'll be hit and dropped shy of the 45. Throwing again on second down. Jones. Jones in trouble here, and down he goes. JPP cruising in for the sack that time. Jones now throwing on third and long. And that will be incomplete. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call, but how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Uh, hey, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Here's Mayfield. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. So that Charles, a season long right there. And you know who's really excited about that? The special teams coordinator, because he's the one who has to tell the head coach in pregame, this is where we trust him from. This distance, he can hit it, and he repaid that trust by knocking that one right through. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by a Akella Witherspoon. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Defensively, they've had their way in this one. That pick six makes that scoreboard even more lopsided. I remember talking with a guy in the league, and I said, what do you do when the game's like this? You know, it's pretty much over. You ready to go to the bench and hang out? He said, oh, heck no. I want to stay on the field. I might get some stats. I might get a pick or two. <laughs> he likes being out there at the end of these wide margins. When they have to throw it, that gives you more opportunities to go get it. Lutz with the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Indy set to go on offense once more. It's now appearing that this losing streak is going to continue. You know, the coaching staff was confident that this was going to be the game to stem the tide, but that just has not been the case. Jones throwing after the interception. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. To throw again on second down. Jones. That'll be swung out wide here for Henderson. Give him six on the play. And they're going to face a third down. Looking to throw. Jones. Fighting through pressure. And that is incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to air one out for Anderson. And the 
pass is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. Open man is Higgins. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. A handoff to Mixon. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. Mayfield on play action. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Mayfield looks to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. T. Higgins, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Jaguars are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Well, they mentioned this week, Charles, they had a couple kinks on offense that they wanted to fix. I would say they're pretty well fixed. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, just about everything they've run has been successful. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Lutz good on the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. To be frank, you really have to feel for them. This is appearing to not be their week yet again. So another loss in the cards as they trail big. No, oh, bottled up fumble. It's out, it's loose. And the Jags grab it. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. Mixon with a first down carry. Open space inside the 10. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Joe Mixon, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jags take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Well, they just continue to roll. And, Charles, for you and I, we want the close games. But for them, it has to be so nice to enjoy this big cushion. I can't remember the last time we saw them play this loose and have this much fun. I think they'd love to be able to capture this game, carry it with them from week to week, and be able to execute like this in all the rest of their games. Lutz with the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side of this one. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. 
Back to throw. Jones. And this one's incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Looking to throw. Jones. And he'll air this one deep for Anderson. Ball oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Officially just 27 yards there on the punt. The Jaguars back with it on offense. And this one has gone pretty well to form. They've come in, had little problem thus far, and now they'll try to polish things off in the fourth. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They find some open field here. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. The CD, I mean, there are touchdown runs, and then there are touchdown runs. And that one certainly fell into the latter category. And that deserves a couple exclamation points. And that's why he's one of the best running backs in the game today, because this run combined all the elements. Started with patience, and he was just waiting for the right lane to materialize. Then once he saw it, he used his speed and escapability in tandem and turned this into a tremendous play. And he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on Next Gen Stats. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. The Colts set to take over here offensively. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Uh, so they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. Now Jones on first and 10. He'll take a shot for Davis to the end zone. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Throwing Jones. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. But they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Hey! Corey Davis with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Colts get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Fairbairn good with the extra point as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. 
And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. On third down, Mayfield. And he'll spot Higgins open left side. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Here's Jones throwing on first down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Looking to throw again on second down. Jones. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Jones now on first down. That's taken in by Henderson. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Again, he'll drop to throw. It's caught. It's Miller. And he's got it on. And cross over out of bounds right at the 25. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Throwing again on second down. Jones. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They'll look to throw again. Open man, it's Rager. He's got it. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Now Jones. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. Back to throw, Jones. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. In the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. That's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there.
Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Jaguars, the win gets them back over 500 at 5-4 five and four on the year. And they'll return home next week to take on the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, for the Colts, what else is new? They fall again. That's now 10 straight losses to start the year. And they'll try to get back on track next week as they head up to Orchard Park to take on the Buffalo Bills.